Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Australia once again and we're going to return to a brewery that has now featured on the channel quite a few times before. Now, I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last year or so. These guys are a very, very highly rated brewery at the moment and if people were to ask me about them, I would say that they're probably best known for their different kinds of New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs, but also for their fruity, juicy, smoothie, Nordic, whatever we're going to call them, sour beers. Now, the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a sub-style that I haven't tried from this brewery before. It's also a sub-style that you don't come across all that much, apart from its kind of native area, in all honesty. We've only reviewed maybe one or two of these on the channel over the years. But um, it's part of a family of styles that I know this brewery can do very, very well. And I'm just really curious to see what this one's going to have in store for us. So hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So yeah, for this review then, we are going to head down to Australia, like I said. We're going to go to the state of New South Wales, the city of Sydney, and to be precise, the district of Botany. And that means that we're going to have a look at another beer from the wonderful One Drop Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Winwood Hood. It comes in at 8.2% ABV, and they're describing this one as uh, an Imperial Florida Vice. And it's got pineapple, mango, passion fruit, and coconut water added into it. So, um, yeah, we've had many excellent smoothie sours from One Drop Brewing over the last little while. And this is one that just kind of stood out to me because it was described specifically as an Imperial Florida Vice. You don't come across that sub-style all that often. And uh, yeah, to find one brewed in Australia, I think is pretty unusual as well. And it's something a bit different from One Drop Brewing. So yeah, a few points of interest when it came to this particular beer out of all the one drops that were available. But yeah, this is yet another beer that I picked up at uh, Gur Beer in the One Mall in Chim Sha Tui uh, in Kowloon here in Hong Kong. They've always got a great selection of beer, but one drop are uh, regulars through there. So if you're curious to try stuff from this brewery in Hong Kong, that's the place that you want to go. And uh, yeah, if you are curious about Australian beer, do make sure you check out my friend Sam Smalley over at Short and Stout Beer Reviews. He loves these guys as well. So yeah, I'll put the link to his channel in the video description for you below, along with the link to um, Gur Beer's Facebook or Instagram page. So keep an eye on those and see what you can find. But let's crack on with this one then and see what it's gonna have in store for us. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, though, just fast forward, all the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from One Drop Brewing Company before. This must be review seven or eight or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm sure we'll add more to that list at some point in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use that little search bar, put your hometown, state, county, province, whatever you like. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that though, you can check out the uh, playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Australian playlist along with a number of other things that's being added to quite regularly because we do get a good selection of Aussie beers up here in Hong Kong. But do make sure you check out the uh, playlist of beers from other countries as well because there are some very interesting things on the channel these days. But yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a wee bit about One Drop Brewing once again then. So One Drop, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in the Botany area of Sydney in New South Wales, very close to Sydney Airport actually. And this company was founded in mid-2016, although they wouldn't open their doors a few years later until 2019. Uh, the four people behind this company are Clay Grant, Meg Barbitz, Nick Calder Scholes and Liam Quinn and um, they've got quite an interesting background actually. So Clay uh, worked in food catering and he shared the idea with Meg, his wife, that he wanted to start up a brewery and she was very supportive of this. She'd actually worked with tech startups for quite a few years and she liked the idea of them having their own startup company together. So Nick is originally from New Zealand and he was the original head brewer at Garden Brewery in Zambia. 
Zagreb in Croatia, and it was there that he met Meg and Clay, who were on holiday visiting Meg's family. But Liam is Nick's best, best friend, and he was in the army, but also had a lot of experience in the hospitality sector as well. So they had quite a variety of skills to get this company off the ground, and it has been pretty successful. So Clay and Meg founded the company officially in mid-2016 when they designed the brand and started planning the company, and they apparently sold their house to uh, fund it, but they also decided to use a little bit of the money to go and visit Croatia, which is where they met Nick, who would join the venture a little bit later in 2018. So the idea behind the name One Drop is that a single idea or action can change the course of everything, and of course, um, Clay and Meg say that's what happened to them when they decided to go for it and found the brewery. But the brewery itself is located in an old paper mill, and they sourced the brewing equipment from Canadian company DME, and that originally included a 12 hectolitre brew kit and six 24 hectolitre fermentation vessels. And they've also got a canning line from East Coast Canning in the US as well. But they have, of course, expanded the brewery quite significantly over the last few years. So, like I said, this brewery are probably best known for their different kinds of New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs, and the sort of fruity, smoothie, sour beers. They do quite a few... Um, like imperial pastry stouts and stuff like that as well we've reviewed one of those on the channel before but you know that's not my uh, favorite style of course i think the the um, new england ipas and the smoothie sours from these guys though are pretty damn good but as of september 2024 when i'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 415 different kinds of beer according to untapped at the time of filming and that number will no doubt continue to increase as time goes on. But um, yeah, that's everything I can really tell you about One Drop Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn a wee bit more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped, and Beer Advocate pages to learn a wee bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, that's that for the moment. And uh, I'm sure we'll have more to tell you about the history of this brewery at some point in the future. But yeah, um, check out the fate of the untapped and rate beer pages and things if you want to learn more about all the different beers and things that these guys have done. So yeah, let's have a little look at the beer itself and see what it's going to have for us. So the artwork on this one, as you can see, is a little bit more... Colourful. It reminds me of Grand Theft Auto Vice City, to be honest with you. And of course, Vice City, I think, was based on Miami, but the colour of this one really is uh, like that. You know, the Tommy Versetti shirts and things like that. But there you can see at the top of the can the One Drop Brewing Company symbol. It's a gold top on this one, which is quite often the case with One Drop Brewing. This one, I think, is, yeah, 440 millilitres rather than 473. But uh, yeah, it tells you a little bit about the beer just on the back here. So we'll read that just now. So like we said, this one is called Winwood Hood, 8.2% uh, Imperial Florida Visa. This one, um, inspired by our travels to Miami, Florida, Winwood Hood um, exemplifies the area that was the breeding ground for this namesake of, for the namesake of this can style, the Florida Visa. A step mash tart wheat beer inspired by the traditional Berliner Visa, but with a vibrant and tropical twist. In true OD fashion, we've cranked the whole thing right up to 305. With a higher ABV and enhanced mouthfeel, we thought such a base uh, fit to load up on huge doses of mango, pineapple, passion fruit and coconut water during fermentation. Tropical, tasty and also oh vibrant. So it says we should roll this one. So I'll roll it a little bit and just get it all ready. What else did it say to do? Um, so roll and then uh, flip. So yeah, we should flip it once or twice, like that. So um, yeah, likes to say also flip it and roll the can. So uh, yeah, as I said, 440 milliliter with this one, Winwood Hood, um, probably some of the most famous breweries in Florida for um, the uh, Florida vices would be like J.W. Wakefield and things like that. Um, American Solera, I think, are another one based in that area. Yeah, that's definitely a place I need to go. Is uh, I think it's Tampa, uh, as well, are quite well known for uh, for uh, the Florida IPAs. That's another thing. Yeah. So yeah, let's get this guy out into the glass then and see how we go. Winwood Hood, an Imperial Florida Vice, eight point two percent ABV, mango, pineapple, and was it passion fruit? What's the other one? Yeah, mango, pineapple, and passion fruit. Let's see what this is going to have in store for us. 
looks very, very good. Right, we've still got a wee bit left in the can, but we'll put, well, might as well just put it all in just now. It's not going to fill up the glass, is it? Yeah, <laughs> there was just a tiny bit I'd left in it. But yeah, um, anyway, you can see this beer looks pretty damn impressive, actually. So, um, yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> so, this one obviously has poured a kind of mango juice colour. Uh, mixed tropical fruit juice. So remember the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar caramelises and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any barrel aging that you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect the colour as well. And in the case of these kind of modern sour beers, yeah, the fruits are going to play quite a big role. So yeah, your passion fruit, mango, and pineapple in this one are all going to play a role in the colour of this beer. You can see that when we poured this one though there was very little head to it and to be honest that's quite common with these big smoothie sours that you get from one drop brewing and not just this brewery of course it will be the case with others but um, yeah it looks the part this one. A little bit of carbonation visible on the surface of the liquid there and one or two bubbles stick into the side of the glass but um, yeah I have to say this one looks really nice you can see it's pretty damn um, opaque actually so yeah you can see that with this one if I put my hand behind it there you can see that but that will no doubt be due to the uh, the oat and the wheats uh, the wheat that is in this beer is this does it mention this one's got oat yeah mm. but of course and um, when they talk about this beer the Berliner Weisse originated in Germany in Berlin a uh, really interesting just kind of wheat based sour beer uh, and the Florida Weisse of course is just like an amped up version like that as they said on the can but um, other than that I don't know if there's really anything else we can say about the um, appearance of this beer it is pretty much what you would expect when uh, you think about what style it is and um, you know what fruits and things are in it so yeah let's have a wee look at the nose of this one then and see what it's all about i'm uh, really curious to see how this beer turns out oh right okay it's actually very very soft in its aroma um another thing i should say about this beer as well is this is going to be the strongest um sour beer that i'll have tried thus far from uh, from one drop brewing most of them are usually like five and a half six percent so this one will be quite a bit more than that um but obviously aroma wise this is uh this one's really really nice actually um very very soft very light you know kind of juicy it almost just smells a little bit lighter you do get a little bit of that more kind of citricky note from the backbone coming out of it but yeah, it's kind of everything that you'd uh, it's everything that you'd expect. So, yeah, all in all, the way that it goes together is uh, is really really nice. Oh, mosquito! I think I got it. Hope I got that. Yeah, happens. Builders renovating the flat next door. They left the windows open, so all the mosquitoes come in. It's so annoying. Anyway, right back to the beer. But yeah, lovely, very soft creamy juicy aroma to this one so let's just break it down and describe it for you a wee bit more in depth so the backbone of this beer um you do get a little bit of like fresh white ready bread crust there's a wee bit of that going on but um there's wee touches of cracker little bits of woodiness in there um but in honesty the backbone of the beer is very much like um kind of petit filou fromage free yogurt there's a lot of that in this one you can smell the coconut um, mixing in with that kind of yogurty vibe that the beer has. Um, so, yeah, lovely yogurty character, kind of, um, as I say, quite, there's a little touch of vanilla to this one. So lots of creamy yogurt, vanilla character, creamy notes in there. Um, yeah, the way that that goes together is really, really nice. Um, yeah, it's really interesting this one actually because it, 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 it's what you kind of expect from the style and it's definitely got the same vibe as the other one drop 
brewing beers, but it's just that little bit different. It just has the, the way the yogurt and the coconut is mixing together in this one is that little bit different. And it's potentially because it's more of a wheaty leaning beer rather than being so oaty. But I'm pretty sure just looking at it, there's got to be some oat in this, of course, as well. Um, but yeah, the aroma of this is very, very nice. You can smell a little bit of that creamy oaty character in there. There's a little bit of oaty dryness too. Little hints of maybe like Werther's original butter candy, butterscotch. There's a wee bit of that going on, of course. That will be from the alcohol. Maybe a very, very slight biscuit. But yeah, it really is very yogurty, like a kind of coconut and vanilla yogurt seem to be forming the kind of backbone of this beer. But the um, yeasty side of things, for me, the yeasty side of the beer at the, the back of the nose, um, it's kind of interesting because it's got a little bit more, there's a little mix of like white bready and brown bready character in the uh, at the back of the nose with this one. So yeah, the way that all of that pieces together, I think is, uh, is really, really nice. Um, but yeah, the, the yeastiness just adds that little bit more uh, kind of depth uh, to the beer as well, which is really interesting. So, um, yeah, is there anything else we really need to, uh, is there anything else that we need to add to that? Hmm. Not sure, but I think we've said everything that we really need to about, um, yeah, I think we've said everything that we really need to about the malty and yeasty side of this beer, actually. So, um, yeah, I think that should just about do it for that. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, now when it comes to sour beers, the hopping is, is quite an interesting thing to talk about because back in the day with the Belgian sour beers, you know, the Lambics, the Flanders Reds and things, what they used to do with those beers is add older hops to them that had lost a little bit of their alpha acid potency because they didn't want the bitterness of the hops to take away from the sourness of the beer. Makes sense, right? But with modern sour beers like this, um, a lot of breweries um, say, oh, because we're adding fruit into these, that's going to suppress the green component anyway, which they're right about. So as a result, many of them don't use hops. Some will, though, because they feel that it adds just a little bit more depth of flavour. Um, you know, Holy Goat and uh, Vault City in Scotland like to add hops to the beers. The Swedish breweries that I often encounter don't, and I'm pretty sure One Drop Brewing don't really add um, hops into these uh, kind of more modern sour beers either. But yeah, the um, the kind of hoppy or the 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 green component of this beer though, you do still get a little bit of placebo out of some of these, and that's why I say you still have a green component with with these beers. So for me, um, there's a little teeny bit of earthiness and woodiness in there. Earthiness is very minimal; it's more kind of woody. But yeah, there's a little bit of woodiness and a little bit of a kind of um, grassy character. Um, coming out of this one as well. But yeah, the green component is very, very minimal in this. Your focus is, of course, on the big fruity carrots, but you're the coconut kind of backing up. And I think the coconut water that's in this one is like, um, you know, the, the coconut water in this beer is kind of pushing the... Um, it's pushing the, the kind of woody side of the beer, actually. But yeah, the fruity side of things is really interesting in this one. Because of the the fact that it's like a, a sour wheat beer and it's a vice you do have a little bit of that kind of sharper citricky note out of this one but at the same time you've got the lovely juicy ripe mango it's almost a little bit guava like and um, because of the the kind of vice character in this beer so you've got that little bit of kind of green guava type character coming out of this one i've always found that guava is like a very ripe slightly green mango almost but then yeah you've got the soft pineapple in there or the juicier pineapple, I should say, and the softer passion fruit underneath. But aroma-wise, um, this beer is really, really quite interesting. And as I say, it's got a similar vibe to the other um, One Drop Brewing sour beers that I've had aroma-wise, but it just is different because of that citricky vibe that it has. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff for sure. But uh, as I always say, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of your beer before you get stuck into it. I think it's about time that we try this one and see what it's all about. So yeah, this one is the Winwood Hood, an 8.2% Imperial Florida Visa from uh, One Drop Brewing Company in Botany, Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. Let's get stuck into this one then and see what it's all about. Slanja, Skoll and cheers. Oh, 
that is really really nice um yeah um that's a lovely a lovely beer um yeah it's definitely got the the big fruity smooth character that you want from something like this especially if you're a, a one drop fan like i am but as i say it's not um this one it's more a kind of like silky maybe close to the word i'm looking for but not quite it's definitely not as thick and kind of creamy as the sort of five six percent smoothie sours that you're going to come across this one has a little bit more of a silky mouthfeel but you still have that big big huge flavor that you expect of these things so um yeah the way that all of that goes together in this one is uh, is really really nice But yeah, I love yellow sours as well. The kind of passion fruit, mango, um, pineapple, the, the, these kind of yellow fruits. I really, really enjoy these. Um, in Sweden, you know, um, a lot of the breweries did berry sours. Berry sours were more popular in Scandinavia. The more tropical fruit ones um, came along every so often, but yeah, not quite as much. And I think it's because of that I enjoy these a little bit more because they were a bit more of a rarity. Um, for me but yeah this is a lovely lovely beer this one um, and as I say it's as good as the other ones I've had you can feel it's that little bit more boozy but it's just really really well done so a big big thumbs up to um, to one drop brewing for for this this is this is good and this one as I say it's I think it stands out a bit just because it's that little bit different. So I hope they do more of these uh, Florida Vices, actually. This, this is pretty good. They can maybe make their own kind of uh, Botany Vice or a Sydney Vice or something like that. So, um, yeah, let's just break this beer down then and describe it for you a wee bit more in depth. Um, as I've often said, when it comes to these modern sour beers, they're quite straightforward in terms of their flavour and aromas, but if they're done well, they're great, great beers to drink. But, yeah, middle third of your palate then. The backbone of the beer, you've got that lovely kind of little bit of fresh white ready bread crust in there as you go further forward on that middle third of your palate you get a wee bit of um you do get a little bit of that kind of woody character in there and you can feel like a little smattering of uh, of jacob's cream cracker which is very very nice too so yeah above that though you can feel there is a little bit of that um you do get a little bit of like white red in there and you can feel a little bit of the, a little bit of dryness from the wheat but for the most part it feels like a kind of yogurty kind of character that sits above that the oats and the wheat are all com and are all combining together and they've got that coconut flavor uh, from the coconut water just infused within them as well like um, the way that all of that kind of pieces together in this one is really really nice um yeah so above the kind of white bready backbone and the cracker and the bread crust and things that you have you have this kind of more yeah you have this more dense um and slightly just slightly sharp citricky yogurty kind of layer coming out of the beer um, and that lingers there into the aftertaste and i think that it's really really nice so on top of that you can feel there's a little bit of a more kind of creamy oaty character like if you go down the middle line of your tongue you can feel the kind of creaminess of the oats in there and they do get a little bit drier out toward um, the edges of the palate there with this one also being 8.2 percent ebv you do have quite a little bit of um yeah you've got quite a little bit of of sweetness out of this one from the booze so in the dead center of your palate you can feel that little circle there and you've got a wee bit of like werther's original butter candy butterscotch uh coming out of it so yeah werther's original butter candy butterscotch and maybe just a little hint of biscuit surrounding that as well so yeah let's say that's a really really nice aspect to uh, to this particular beer So yeah, 
I do like that with um, I do like that with this one and just how that pieces together. But um, yeah, the um, other than that, I don't know if there's really too much to say about the middle third year palette then. So let's go to the back third year palette then. Remember that generally speaking, sweeter flavours come out further forward on the palette and more dry and bitter flavours come out further back. So yeah, on the um, the border region between middle and back third year palette, you do get a little bit of bready build up in there. You can feel it's maybe slightly brown bready in the base and then it's kind of more white bready in the middle and then you get more of the kind of yogurty character sitting in it above that. But then, yeah, the base of that, um, yeah, the base of that back third year palette, you've got the kind of bread crusty character again, you've got the kind of Jacob's cream cracker, you've got a wee bit of a kind of, I'd say it's more like a sweet brown bread in honesty, um, feels like that. So you've got a little bit of a kind of brown bready, white bready layer in there that feels kind of thicker, then you've got that more yogurty, um, you've got that more kind of yogurty type note that um that kind of comes above it so um yeah the way that that goes together i think is um it's quite nice as well the yogurty character on the back third of the palette just feels that little bit drier and i think there's a wee bit of the drier oaty character just creeping over the top of that on the top of the malty part on the back third year palette too but then above everything else there it's the yeasty side of things so let's have a little look at the yeasty flavors there before we leave the back third of the palette so yeah the yeasty side of things in this one for me um you've got a big like it's a sort of sweet almost brown bready character in the middle of it then surrounding it is a little bit more white bready and it's got a wee bit of a kind of bread crusty type note as well so uh, yeah got the bread crust on the outside kind of white bread around the edge and then a more kind of sweet brown bready character in the middle of it almost and it almost feels as if it's like kind of coated in some sort of yogurty sort of thing so yeah and of course it's that citricky sharper yogurt when i say these yogurt flavors i mean like it's like one of these drinking yogurts and it just has that wee bit of sharpness to it which is nice but yeah definitely back third of your palate you can feel the flavor is taller then as you move further forward into the middle third of your palate it just condenses down and squashes together that little bit more so um yeah interesting stuff for sure so on the uh, hoppy side of things then with this one, as I say, I'm pretty sure just from the the size of the palette here, it's, it's too smooth to have hops in it, this one. But then again, it's the one one drop brewing like to really heavily fruit their beer. So if there were hops in here, that flavor would just be kind of engulfed by the, the, uh, the fruits. But that said, you do get a little bit of, you do feel a little bit of an almost placebo effect with this one. So there's a wee touch of like earthiness in the back corners of the palette and as you move further forward it's maybe a little touch more woody and there's a wee kind of placebo floral note and grassiness uh, floral notes in the front corners of the palette then more grassy around the kind of front curve of the tongue so yeah these things are definitely in there and you can feel the fruit has just kind of engulfed that and uh, pushed it back so yeah the way all of that goes together is uh, is really really nice in this one So yeah, fruity side of this beer is uh, is really really good. As I say, the front third of your palate is all about the kind of the fruity side of things with this, and it's, it is as I say, it's lovely. Um, so where do we start with this one then? Um, yeah, so the border region. Uh, between front third and middle third of your palate you get that nice little bit of kind of bready-ish build up in there again like it's a sweet brown bread underneath white bread and then more of the kind of yogurty flavour sitting on the top the base of that front third of your palate again it's the bread crust the cracker a little bit of the kind of mix of white bread and brown bread there and then the kind of yogurty note there the yogurty note in this one is um, again it's quite smooth and a little bit sharper actually that sharpness is a wee bit more prominent on the uh, the front of the palette there 
But yeah, you can feel the kind of the bready character. I think is where the coconut water, the sort of coconut flavors, seem to be embedded in that. But they come out of the yogurt a little bit more into the aftertaste as well, which I find uh, really really interesting. But yeah, on the fruity side of things with the beer, then we've got pineapple, passion fruit, and uh, mango in this one. So I think the all of them are kind of mixing together in this. So I think the in the base of the fruity character. It's the, the passion fruit is kind of giving you the backbone. The mango is sitting on top of that and giving you like a more kind of ripe, uh, you're getting more of the ripeness out of that. And then, um, yeah, so you've got, yeah, the passion fruit sitting as the backbone. The mango is giving you the ripeness above that. Then you've got the more juicy characters uh, coming out of it, which are, uh, yeah, the more juicy kind of characters are from the kind of pineapple I would say and round the edge of the palate I think it's yeah maybe the pineapple and the mango that are spreading around the side there so that's really quite interesting how all that goes together but um, yeah it's a beautiful beautiful beer this one a bit different from what we've had from uh, one drop before but this is definitely worth trying actually and I hope they do more of these these are very this is very good actually mm. So yeah, um, I think we can leave it at that for the flavour of this one. As I say, quite a straightforward beer, but just so nice to drink. Really, really well done. So um, yeah, let's round off this review then with a wee look at the uh, the mouthfeel. So for me, um, like I say, it's not quite as thick and creamy as some of the other ones you're going to come across from, uh, from One Drop Brewing. It's sort of a more oily and slick character that you want to get from this beer which I think suits it very very well. Carbonation is virtually non-existent in this one uh, in honesty. You do get one or two bubbles out of it as you saw but yeah kind of more oily and slick rather than anything else. Um, the IBU count in this beer is probably zero but maybe there's a little bit five IBUs, ten IBUs at the absolute most. It's more about the sourness in this one but yeah you've got that wee bit of kind of malty graininess um, underneath as we said but then your malt base is more kind of yogurty and kind of sharp and things and quite creamy and a wee bit sweet into the aftertaste as well, I should add. But yeah, sourness in this one isn't going to blow the head off you. It just comes in behind the front tip of the tongue and this beer mellows out really nicely and gives you that um, lovely kind of uh, fruity juiciness there. But obviously you've got the kind of tartness of the uh, from the, the vice yeast, of course, and from the, the fruits involved in this one. But all in all, another beautiful, beautiful beer from uh, One Drop Brewing Company, and I'm not surprised uh, after all this time. So um, yeah, this one was the Winwood Hood, an 8.2% Imperial Florida Vice with coconut water, mango, passion fruit, and pineapple from One Drop Brewing in uh, Botany near Sydney in New South Wales down in Australia. Let's leave it at that for this one. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from uh, One Drop Brewing as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys again at some point in the very near future. But until then, slanja, skull, cheers, and I'll catch you guys in another review very, very soon. Ciao just now.